today's video and today we're going to be starting out with a new series called Election Predictions Reacts. Essentially, I react to other YouTubers' election predictions, seeing if we agree or disagree with their prediction. This is the first video of the series. Let's talk elections. Without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Hadn't characterized the states for the Democrats on the lean side. We start off with the big one, the state of Texas, where the Democratic Party does have a fighting chance in the future, but I don't think they're going to beat Donald Trump in this state. They were very hopeful back in 2020. And ultimately, they did come quite close. Texas went from a state that in 2012 went to Mitt Romney by 17 points, then went to Trump by 9 points, then went to Trump by 6 points. It is a clear and consistent trajectory trend in favor of the left wing. But it also is at a point where this state, yes, Democrats do have a reasonable shot at narrowing it up, but I do not think they win in 2024. Which le Now, I do agree with LT's explanation. I do believe the state, generally speaking, is trending to the left. And I don't think that Republican Democrats will actually win the state in 2024. However, the margin I disagree with. Because of Biden's low approval rating, I don't believe that Democrats will make inroads in the state of Texas, and I do believe that Republicans will win by around 7 to 8 points, rather than the under 5 points he is suggesting. But overall, we don't disagree by all that much. Let's continue to the Rust Belt. We start off with the Rust Belt, which I believe would go to the Democrats by a lean margin. As it stands today, the Democratic Party has a very viable shot at victory in 2024 through the Rust Belt without the state of Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, keeping all the states Hillary Clinton won back in 2016 except Nevada and then winning the Rust Belt as the Democrats did in 2020. You can win the election. And guess what? That number, that one electoral vote that puts Joe Biden over the top is Nebraska's second congressional district, which went to Democrats in 2020 by margin. Now, I do agree that Democrats are favored in Nebraska's second congressional district and most of the Rust Belt. However, I would like to stress by saying that I don't believe states like Wisconsin or Pennsylvania will actually go to the Democratic Party by a lean margin. At the end of the day, especially in the state of Wisconsin, the race is very, very close. Biden won the state by less than one percentage point in 2020. So again, I don't see Democrats having a huge victory in the Rust Belt, like he is suggesting maybe a 2 or 3% victory in all three of those states. I think that margin is a little bit too large, in my opinion, but I do agree that Democrats are generally favored in the Rust Belt. Let's move on again. Democrats are still going to win the same states they did in 2020, even by a larger margin. Now, it might seem extreme seeing Georgia, Arizona as lean blue states, but keep in mind this is a one to five point margin. Democrats did win Georgia in 2020 by 0 0.2. They did win Arizona in 2020 by 0 0.3. But what this tells me, especially looking back at the 2022 results, because this is important, that states like Arizona and Georgia punish candidates when they are aligned heavily with Donald Trump. It happened. Now, I do agree that, again, Trump may not be the best candidates in this Sunbelt regions as opposed to Rust Belt. Nonetheless, I cannot agree with some of his characterizations. For example, though Arizona and Georgia both voted for Biden in 2020 and don't really like Trump, I don't think they're very satisfied with Joe Biden either. Many voters voted for Biden because they, they felt like that Trump was a worse alternative. Nonetheless, people typically blame the incumbent president for things they do not see fit, and in this case, it will be Joe Biden. At the end of the day, there's a lot of problems right now with the U.S., such as oil prices, the economy, and all that. And really, it just seems like that although, again, voters may not support someone like Donald Trump, I think that Joe Biden definitely lacks the enthusiasm of voters for, for them to actually vote for him. LTE on Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Traditional to old conservatives but Donald Trump makes it difficult for that to happen. He's not one of those conservatives. He's not one of the electable conservatives. And that is a problem for the GOP. Joe Biden, though, he is unpopular. Though we are not in as best of a position as I think, you know, the Democrats are arguing we are in when it comes down to the economy or social issues or whatever it might be. There are still things that Joe Biden did not deliver on. But there are a lot of things that he did. Now, I do agree that Trump may not be as electable as some of the other candidates. Nonetheless, I do not agree that Biden is an electable candidate. Though yes, Biden may have delivered on some things 
in the first two years of his presidency. In 2022, Democrats lost control of the House, and and Republicans have basically been blocking some of the Democrats' legislation, and Biden has not had a lot of things done in the past year. So, regardless if you blame Biden or the Republicans, you cannot deny the fact that American, the American public is going to place the blame on Joe Biden, and thus I do feel like that LTE is overestimating Democratic support. Now let's watch Let's Talk's election summary. This is why I believe not only does Joe Biden win, but he expands on his 2020 states, solidifies the blue wall, locks down New Mexico, Virginia, Minnesota, and New Hampshire, all swing states from prior elections, and wins North Carolina, narrows down the Republican victories in Texas, Iowa, Ohio, even Alaska that could benefit Mary Peltola in that congressional race. The Dem- now, I do believe that, first of all, when you look at the state of North Carolina, with the state being so Democratic, I just simply cannot agree with that prediction. The thing is, Biden did lose the state in 2020, and I don't see him winning a state that he lost in 2020, given his approval rating right now. It's negative plus 12, according to 538, as it stands right now, in my belief. And so really, I just don't think that Republicans are going to end up losing states they won in 2020. Especially because LTE, I think, has overemphasis on the fact that Trump is very unpopular, which is true. But he is not emphasizing on the fact that Biden is also very un- unpopular at the same time. And where when there's an incumbent, people are going to blame many of the problems on the incumbent, rather than the former president. Now, this is a summary of my opinion about the LTE prediction. As you can see, as the colors indicate, the green color means I 100% agree with their prediction, the yellow color means I mostly agree, and for the purple color, it means I mostly disagree or completely disagree. Now, I do agree that Minnesota is probably a likely Democrat, and it's going to go for a Democratic Party. I do believe that Nebraska second is lean Democratic. I do believe that Michigan is going to go to Democrats by a lean margin, and Maine's at large vote will also go to Democrats by a likely margin. Now, we see most of these states in the mostly agree column. I generally agree with their characterization, but I just have maybe a marginal difference on how much the the Democrats or Republicans are going to win the state by. For example, as I mentioned, Wisconsin, I do believe Democrats are maybe slightly favored, similarly in Pennsylvania, but I do believe that the margins will be slightly closer than LTE anticipates. And then we have the mostly disagree or completely disagree states. These are states that I predict a different outcome from Let's Talk elections. I do believe that all three of these states will go to the Republican Party as opposed to LTE's prediction. Now, the state that I most disagree with is the state of North Carolina. Let's Talk elections has the state as a tilt Democratic state, but in reality, I do believe that Republicans are pretty favored in the state, considering the fact that Biden did lose the state in 2020. So overall, I do believe that his election predictions do have somewhat of a Democratic bias. That being said, I believe his analysis is still mostly accurate on how he views some of the things. I do believe that he has an overemphasis on the Trump unpopularity and really doesn't mention as much on the Biden unpopularity, but overall it's still a fine prediction. If I had to give this prediction a grade, I'd say that it's about 70% accurate. Anyways, that's just my own opinion. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.